All right, to discuss the growing demand for the presidential assent to the electoral amendment bill and concerns from the delay, we're joined by Samson Itoto, Executive Director of Yaga Africa. Samson, glad to have you join us. Hi, good evening. When Adeshino says the CSOs are ignorant of constitutional requirements or provisions based on this action, you want to think that is right? I think um, the presidential spokesperson was, um, was wrong and the position of civil society is we won't join issues with, with him. Um, if he um, referred to the statement that we issued last week Friday, we noted in that statement under paragraph 4 of that statement where clearly stated that we know that section 58 sub 1 of the constitution provides that the president has about 30 days um, to assent or withhold assent. And we noted that, and we noted that, yes, he has up till March 1st or 2nd um, to, to, to indicate his position. However, this pressure is informed by Clause 28 sub 1 of the Electoral Bill 2022 that requires INEC to issue notice of election 360 days. Today, February 22nd, makes it exactly one year to the 2023 elections. And if he ascends to the bill outside of this timeline, it will affect the dates for the elections. That is, if he ends up assenting to the bill, and we, are, we, are, we expect and believe that he's going to ascend to the bill. So we noted that um, in, 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 the, the, in our statement. Now we're very, very clear that this is about public pressure. Uh, and we've looked at, you know, the trends um, on uh, electoral amendments. Yes, this is, this is the, f the president has declined assent to the electoral bill fit for five times. Four, I think uh, so. Actually, five times. He did five. four uh, in the eighth assembly, and then in December, he uh, declined assent. The National Assembly reworked the bill expeditiously, mm -hmm. um, in line with citizens' demand, and have transmitted the bill. And if he had, you know, indicated he was going to assent to the bill as soon as these issues are addressed, and he waits, because we're also concerned. We don't want him to wait till March 1st, because the issues are out there. They've been addressed. So why, why the delay? But the, the protest was just you know, to draw attention. In the event the president is not aware of Clause 28 and its implications, because the more you continue to shift dates, the more you create you know, uncertainties within the entire well, electoral process. Well, just that, we interviewed, uh, before my colleague comes, and we, we did have a session with Festus, who should know, he says that they're okay. I mean, signing the bill, okay, but that within the law, they will work with what they have. Yes, of course, you expect, there's also a posture that um, government institutions, you know, project. Um, and I'm sure perhaps his position was he, he didn't want to get into the fray of, of um, you know, this, this advocacy and demand from, from the executive and the National Assembly what to do. Because since this process actually began, INEC has taken a particular position, which was, yes, they are not a pressure group, they are not a civil society organization. We as civil society have the latitude to say the way it is and engage more strategically. But it is inconceivable, and I don't agree with anybody from INEC or whoever, that we go into the general elections with the current electoral act. Mm. It will not guarantee the sanctity of the vote. And I can provide three reasons why I hold that position. First, if you go into an election without legalizing the electronic accreditation, either using the BVAS or any other technological device, you're going to have multiple voting, you're going to have voting by proxy. If you go into the 2023 election without conferring power on INEC to, to review election results declared under duress, you're going to have senators in the National Assembly, um, House of Rep members, State House of Assembly members, or even a president who sits in the, in the villa with um, results that was declared under duress or at gunpoint. And we've seen that. So, right. so they, we, it's just inconceivable to go into another election with the current electoral act. The president, uh, I mean, the presidential spokesperson, presidency has downplayed the risk of a delayed ascent or no ascent at all. But what are your biggest worries? I mean, we've seen this play out. Like you've rightly said, five times it's been sent back. Uh, hopefully, there won't be a sixth time. But 
what are your biggest fears? I, I think the president has no other reason. Um, all the cross-referencing gaps and errors that we identified in National Assembly have addressed it. Um, I think if he has any issues with any clause in the, in the bill, we've urged him like he has done for the Petroleum Industry Act and the 2022 appropriation bill, please send a proposed amendment. Um, and you've got control over the National Assembly in any case. So you, we don't expect there will be any form of legislative gridlock in passing it, that part of legislation. So if he has any issues, send a proposed amendment, but please assent to this because it is critical to the preparations for the 2023 um, general elections. It's just one year, and I tell you, if you look at the timelines in the bill, you're going to have early primaries. You're going to have early submission of list of candidates. You're going to have early campaigns. You're going into an election one year with a new law that has not been tested. And so there's a lot that needs to be done if, um, we don't, we're, not, if we, we're not going to create an atmosphere um, where it becomes very easy for the politicians to manipulate. So, so time is of the essence. It, it, it has been of the essence right. since last um, year. Again, I'll have to refer to the presidential aide who says some people are playing cheap politics and trying to muddy the waters and cause disorder. Because again, if the president refuses assent, the National Assembly can veto him. Absolutely. The, the National Assembly has the power to do so. But the question is, will, will the current National Assembly, do they have, can they muster the courage and the balls to, to, to veto the president? Speculation, my, my, my response, and I'll say up front, personally, and it's my personal view, I don't think this Ninth National Assembly can veto um, the president, given the antecedents of this particular assembly. Um, however, we hope we don't get to that point. But, mm -hmm. but on the point about where well, better people playing cheap politics, maybe his spokesperson knows what we don't know. But what I know for sure is, having engaged this process for several years, and including this process, all the civil society organizations and citizens who have been engaging this have been doing so from a very patriotic point of view, and they are keenly interested in the sanctity of the, of, of the process. Uh, and p citizens have a right, you know, to hold. Uh, and it, we need to reiterate that this is a democracy. And in a democracy, people have constitutional rights of expression and, and, and of thought. And so to, 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 uh, to speak in that manner, to, to be honest, is, is just unfortunate. Uh, and, and it just says a lot about, because I hear some comments around no one can force the president. The president is a creation of the Constitution. He represents the Nigerian people. If you're not ready to stomach pressure, if you're not ready to respond to citizens' demand, then you have no place in public office. Because in a democracy, the people do matter. You have to ask who is afraid of a new electoral law ahead of 2023. Thank you so much, Samson Itodo. Always a delight. Thank That's you. where we have to leave it tonight. Thank you.